Apple recently announced that the iOS 15 public beta is available, but how is it performing on the iPhone SE first gen and what features are available? Let's start with the home screen. There are new widgets entirely such as Find My, Contacts, Game Center, App Store, and Mail. Reordering widget stacks have also been completely redesigned in a more user-friendly UI. Home screen pages can now also be reordered. Let's talk about the new Notes tab. You can now organize your notes by tags and those notes can be browsed through the tag browser. There is now an activity view which shows what each collaborator has done in the note, similar to Google Docs. You can also mention people through putting an add sign in the note. So let's say I want my friend to redo part of the note. I can just add them and they will get notified. Messages has also gotten a pretty nice upgrade. Probably the biggest part of the upgrade is shared with you. Now when someone sends you a song in Apple Music, an article in Safari, an article in News, or something along those lines, there will be a shared with you section in that specific app. So let's say my friend sends me a photo of their trip. Now when I go into the For You tab of my Photos app, there is a shared with you section which contains the photos sent to me by my friend. This is a useful feature since it integrates nicely with other apps. Another big upgrade is when someone sends you a bunch of photos, they will be in a stack instead of taking up the whole screen. Do Not Disturb has also gotten a big upgrade with a new feature called Focus. So I can create a new focus for filming a video which can block certain or all notifications and matching home screen pages with focuses. Once someone attempts to message you, they will see that you have a focus on. Notifications have a whole new design with large app icons. There's also a notification summary which takes all the less important notifications in one large notification. Safari has a major update which I really like except for one minor issue. The tab bar now sits at the bottom of the page for easy one-handed use, and you can swipe between tabs with a simple gesture. The More menu now stores everything that used to be in the toolbar. Everything now takes an extra tap, which I don't really like since it's really unnecessary, but I like the new look and more immersive feel. Tab groups allow you to group your tabs together, and the customizable start page now has the privacy report, a background image, series suggestions, etc. similar to macOS. Extensions are now also available which is amazing. Extensions have to be updated though to work on the iPhone. I really like the new gestures and fluid feel though. There are also some nice upgrades to the weather app featured on the SC First Gen. The new weather map allows you to see the path of a storm and the intensity of the upcoming rain or snow. Furthermore, there are also air quality and temperature maps. Next hour precipitation allows you to get a notification right before rain, snow, hail, or sleet is about to start or stop. The new design is more modern and more in line with the rest of iOS. The only absent feature is the new animated backgrounds, but I can't really tell the difference that much. Here is an iPhone SE second gen which has the A13 chip, meaning it's compatible with the new animations. Compared to the SE first gen, there is a small difference but nothing too crazy. Compared to iOS 12, it looks pretty similar but slightly different, so I don't think the animations are a big deal. However, while all these features are available on the iPhone SE, there are some major features in iOS 15 which require an A12 chip or later, which are not available on this iPhone due to the older chipset. So first up, some features in FaceTime are completely absent, while some are fully featured. Spatial audio, the feature which makes the person's voice come from their placement on the screen, is fully absent. Portrait mode, which blurs your background, is also fully absent. Voice isolation mode, which blocks out background noise, and wide spectrum mode, which prioritizes every sound into the call, are both also absent, despite being listed as compatible on Apple's website. So maybe it's an early beta thing. Grid view and group FaceTime calls, FaceTime links, and SharePlay are fully available. Another app which has some features absent is Maps. The interactive globe, which is similar to Google Earth, is absent, and the new detailed map view is also absent. Otherwise, the other features are fully available. Another feature which is entirely absent on the iPhone SE is Live Text. Live Text allows you to copy text from the camera viewfinder, photos, screenshots, etc. Visual Lookup is also not here which gives you a description of the photo you're looking at. For example, if I'm looking at a photo of the Eiffel Tower, it will let me know more about that specific landmark. One absent change is the redesigned settings menu. It seems it's not available for the 4 inch displays, which kind of makes sense. But it's not really a feature, so I think it's fine that it's excluded on these smaller displays. Unfortunately, Siri's on-device processing for offline tasks such as turning on Bluetooth, setting timers, etc. requires a neural engine, which the A9 does not include. Therefore, on-device Siri processing is not available on the iPhone SE. This means the iPhone SE will not gain the fast on-device processing, offline Siri, or on-device personalization. Now let's talk about what Siri can do on the iPhone SE. 
Siri can now share items on your screen, such as photos. So let's say I'm looking at an article in news. I can just ask Siri to send it to my friend. Furthermore, if you're looking at a contact on your screen, you can just tell Siri, message them I'm on my way. Siri can now also understand contacts better, just like the Google Assistant. So if I ask how tall is the Eiffel Tower, I can then ask what is the address without mentioning the Eiffel Tower again. These features are all available on the iPhone SE. iCloud Plus is also completely new, with a private relay option which is pretty much a VPN. Hide My Email allows you to use a randomized email that forwards to you when signing up for services. If that service starts to spam you, that random email you provided can be completely shut down to stop them. However, you do need an iCloud storage plan to use these features. Now let's talk about some of the smaller but still very useful features. First of all, you can now finally share multiple voice memos at once. I've been waiting for this for years and I'm so glad it's finally here. Playback speed can also be adjusted now, and silence can be fully skipped in recordings with just a tap. Photos now also has an info page which shows you the metadata of the shot including which app it came from if it's a screenshot. And finally, we made it to the last thing on the list, performance in bugs. This is important and makes it or breaks it for an iOS or iPadOS update. To my surprise, iOS 15 feels very similar to iOS 14, possibly even a bit better, meaning I'm not noticing any real difference. I really haven't experienced any bugs yet, except with issues opening voice memos, but that got resolved with a simple restart. So I'm really satisfied with the performance and the lack of bugs. This is pretty surprising to me because on iPadOS 15, I've been experiencing a more stuttery OS, but not on iOS 15. It almost feels like a final release. The battery life is also pretty good. Again, I'm not noticing a big difference here either. This iPhone SE is at 85% battery health, and it's already pretty poor, but it hasn't really gotten worse with iOS 15. So if you have been thinking of getting the public beta for the iPhone SE, I would say it depends. I'm really not experiencing any issues, but it can be different for everyone. So if you download the beta, just be aware that there's always a chance of bugs and issues. Performance is pretty good though, and of course the feature set is pretty great. I really like this update and I'm sure the final version will be even better. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.